Hey everyone, welcome back to Columbia City. Today is episode 35 and we're going to be building in the area around Columbia Avenue here, which is what I'm calling this road in between downtown and Old Town, filling in all these gaps which have gone unfinished in previous episodes. It's about time, so let's get straight into things. The first thing we're going to be doing in this video is building a police headquarters, which, I mean, wow, bad timing, right? Well, I mean, I think it's a good time to talk about politics, because I don't talk about politics on this channel, but I, as an American, I think it's pretty irresponsible not to talk about what's going on in this country right now. I know a lot of my viewers are international viewers. I think only 30% of my viewers are from the United States or something around that. What I'll say to my international viewers is that what people are saying about the American criminal justice system and American police departments in general is correct. Um, I, I want to just start off quickly by reading a quote from John Ehrlichman who was a top aide to Richard Nixon, who started what's called the War on Drugs, which is basically a set of policies which has been perpetuated uh, throughout, you know, I mean, all of the presidencies since Nixon, uh, who was president in uh, the early 70s, late 60s. But it's really Nixon who started the War on Drugs. I'm gonna quickly read you a quotation from one of Nixon's most well-known aides, uh, John Ehrlichman. Many of you might have heard this before, but I feel like it's really eye-opening to those who haven't, and it confirms a lot of the things that you might have been hearing, but which you couldn't quite put your finger on. Quote, We knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either against the war or black, but by getting the public to associate the hippies with marijuana and blacks with heroin, and then criminalizing both heavily, we could disrupt those communities. Quote, we could arrest their leaders, raid their homes, break up their meetings, and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we know we were lying about the drugs? Of course we did. What Ehrlichman is admitting there is that our system is systemically racist, and we're, when we're talking about systemic racism, it might be hard to immediately pinpoint maybe what that means. What it means is that our system is designed around laws which disproportionately criminalize minority communities and oftentimes especially the black community and hurt them in ways which are totally unparalleled in other communities. And these laws are not necessarily overt, like there aren't laws everywhere saying it's illegal to be black or you can get arrested for doing this if you are black. No, it's more like there are laws which are specifically designed to criminalize the black community without overtly saying that the black community um, is criminalized in such a way. And as a result, systemically, African Americans are, I mean, first of all, four times more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession than white people, which is in and of itself horrendous. But African Americans have higher rates of wrongful convictions for crimes they didn't commit. And also, as we've been talking about recently, uh, higher rates of being wrongfully killed by police officers. Somehow, police officers are not held accountable to remotely the same extent as civilians are for murders they commit. And those murders disproportionately affect the African American community and you know, police violence, the fact that police violence of any sort exists, let alone murder by police officers who are sworn to protect their communities, the, the fact that that's happening in 2020 is disgusting. The Black Lives Matter movement is 100% justified and it's not just a gimmicky, sensationalized um, story on the part of the media. No, this is 100% this is justified. And I know it might seem crazy to people in other countries who don't have to deal with this to this extent, but I mean, George Floyd was murdered by police officers by, I mean, one of them just knelt on his neck for multiple minutes as he yelled out that he couldn't breathe and the other officers cooperated and just watched it happen. Then Breonna Taylor was murdered in her own apartment. Like these are, and, and that wasn't talked about basically until, until now, which is almost three months after that murder occurred. It's disgusting. As, as I said before, it's just disgusting that this is 
still happening in America in 2020. Before you dislike this video, and I, I mean, go ahead, dislike this video, actually. Just just do it. Have, have fun with that. Have a good day. But before you go comment, all lives matter. I mean, of course, of course, all lives matter. But there is not a systemic threat to the lives of white people in America on the level that there is a systemic threat to the lives of African Americans, especially, and also other minorities in this country. What we have to realize about this moment is that we're gonna choose whether or not it is pivotal or not by our actions, whether or not we're there protesting and whether or not we're donating. I've put the links to a bunch of different organizations fighting for racial justice in America in the description, and I have also put the link to a donation splitter, which will split your donation between a bunch of different organizations in the description. I couldn't choose which organization to donate to, so I gave to a bunch of them using that splitter, and you could do that too. Listen, I'm white. I don't have to worry when I go outside and take a walk in the evening. And that's something that has somehow, I mean, I, I was going to say become a privilege in this country, but no, it has always been a privilege in this country. I mean, systemic racism and systemic police violence have always been a problem, and they are still a problem. It should not be a privilege to be able to safely walk out on the street at night and not be targeted by the people who are supposed to be protecting you. I know this is a City Skylines video, and I know you're probably not expecting me to talk about uh, police brutality today, but that's the conversation my country's having and the conversation my country needs to be having. So if you're in another country, you can be in on it too. Please help us fix our system. I am well aware that I probably decreased my average like to dislike ratio by a full percent on my entire channel by just talking about that there, but uh, it had to be said because this is not a time to be silent. Another final thing, I'm not going to be monetizing this video because YouTube would demonetize it anyway and it sort of feels wrong to in the first place. Okay, back to regularly scheduled programming. So. You might have seen custom police cars in the parking lot of the police headquarters. Those are made by Cheezum, who made, I mean, a retexture of Ninja Noob Slayer's awesome police car props and vehicles. So those are also vehicles going around the city as well. But Cheezum made a really awesome retexture. They've got, like, waves on the sides, just like the Sound Transit, um, the Sound Transit trains, which is... I mean, not exactly what you see in Seattle, but really, really cool nonetheless. They've also got a custom logo on them that you might have seen that's also a standalone prop that I placed in the front of the building. That logo is by Cheezum as well, but the flag within it is by a viewer named Fishlink, who made a flag for Columbia City, which is really, really, really cool. And that is, like, within the... Uh, police, the police logo for the city and then the police cars themselves, but then also it's a standalone flag in game two, as you saw in that, um, in that cinematic. So, yeah, that's really cool. Um, so thanks so much to both of them for making such awesome content for Columbia City. It is, it's really cool to see people making such awesome stuff for, for the city. If, you, if you're interested in making assets for the city, I don't really have anything specifically that I need. Although, if you have any, like, ideas, definitely reach out. But yeah, a random note I noticed while choosing the music for this video, I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but I think this song in the background here reminds me of Watermelon and Easter Hay by Frank Zappa, which is my favorite Frank Zappa song. It's a good song but uh, the riffs are pretty similar. I, that, totally random note. Anyway, uh, other, other stuff. This build today is, it, it is really unfocused and I needed to do this episode. I usually try to keep the episodes really focused on one main thing, one main build. This is a big gap between downtown and old town that needed to be filled, which I had been like just a bunch of different plots of land that I had been procrastinating 
building on for a long time because I thought it'd be really annoying. And it was. This episode took me like a week to fully finish. It took me a long time. Like the last two episodes took so long. This one was especially annoying though. But uh, I, I managed, I did a lot of stuff off camera. Like you'll see a lot of stuff in the ends, uh, in the cinematics that you didn't see me build on camera. Like I'm just trying to figure out how to get this bike path to work right. It ends up looking completely different. I end up just using a normal walkway with a suspension bridge and uh, it doesn't go as far as, or not a suspension bridge, I forget what it was, but uh, it doesn't go as far as it, it does there. The rail yard sort of thing I'm making here is not fully realistic, but it works for now. And off camera, I'm gonna place some uh, commuter trains here, just like they're being stored at the end of the line. Uh, and yeah, I mean, overall, the, 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 it's not necessarily like a rail yard here. I don't even know what you'd call this. This is just the entrance to the, uh, the Union Station by the water there, which is a terminus station. So it, uh, it doesn't, there's no through traffic at all. The sort of rail yard thing I'm making towards the right doesn't really connect to anything. I end up actually removing it and just mostly placing some, uh, some trees and stuff there. See, I'm using gravel, like my gravel texture is gray, which somebody actually commented is realistic for the Pacific Northwest. I didn't even know that was realistic. What's definitely probably not realistic, at least, is this random, like, gas tank building. I think it's called a gasometer that I, I just placed over there. I have no idea why that would be there. I mean, I, I totally imagine that this area's got a huge industrial past. A lot of the development in these neighborhoods over here is really new especially the stuff that's built off of the main grid. That's very new development, and I, I guess there might have been industrial stuff sort of cutting off Old Town from downtown in the past. There's definitely going to be industrial stuff further towards the water on the other side of Old Town. Uh, as we move forward, we'll place some industry there. Yeah, the buildings I'm placing here are sunken down a little bit, or at least I copied them and sank them down just so that they the windows would be able to have a nice view of the railway. I totally love an apartment in one of these buildings. They're probably newer development for the most part on plots of land that used to maybe have some tracks on, on them, but uh, have been reclaimed for residential use, probably luxury apartments. But yeah, th that'd be a pretty awesome vibe, just have an apartment overlooking the trains. That'd be cool. But yeah, pretty cool stuff here. I'm placing some clusters of trees and bushes. I mostly use the generic trees by Lost Gecko and then the Mr. Mason bushes, which are really amazing. And then I use the I think they're TPB ferns and then the Mr. Mason ferns as well and the London plane trees by Mr. Mason and then those are the core of what I use here. I think I use some clusters by Padelmo as well. Just amazing foliage for that contrasts with the gravel really well. I mostly copy paste that off camera around this area. I'm also using some cliff textures from, uh, from the theme decals mod which are very useful. But yeah, most of the stuff you'll see off camera is stuff that I've already done in some capacity throughout the episode, and I didn't want to repeat it, like just continue placing bush clusters or uh, fixing random spots within the uh, rail yard over there or anything like that. I wanted to do a lot of that off camera just so that you only saw the uh, new content and not just repeats of stuff. Anyway, let's uh, let's hop into the Q and A segment. I think it's about time for that. Okay, getting started with the Q&A segment here. If you have a question, leave a comment, tag hashtag Q&A, and uh, make sure to not ask if I'm gonna build a specific city or if I have a new project in mind or anything like that. Just other questions would be good. 
first question here is from Snowy Games. How long do you plan on playing Columbia City and what are some of your plans for the future of the city? So I plan on playing Columbia City as long as I, I can, as long as the save survives basically. And I, I mean, my plans are hopefully building a huge harbor area, which I've started to think maybe I should use Seattle's inspiration for the harbor as well. Just make, maybe make a smaller version of Harbor Island. Um, that could be cool. But also building a border crossing, an airport, uh, another city on the other side of the bay, huge industrial area, some low income neighborhoods, rural areas, a national park, lots of plans. The next question here is from H. Harkness. If you had to pick one other city currently being built by another YouTuber to be a sister city to Columbia, which would you choose and why? Okay, so I can't pick Nidal now because that series is over. I'm gonna go with Sichuan Province by $2.20. That project is absolutely crazy. And the reason I'd pick it is because it's got really awesome infrastructure and I'm trying to build cool infrastructure in Columbia City and I feel like it's um, got the same sort of thing going on. And I, by sister city, I'm assuming you mean just a city that Columbia City has a diplomatic relationship with. Um, I mean, yeah, Sichuan Province, love that project. Next one is Wofi asking, when using pavement surface painter, how do you get the paint to connect to the pavement? When I do it, they leave cracks in between. So there are these really, really old school surface park buildings on the workshop that's just literally a park that's one tile by one tile or two miles two yeah, two tiles by two tiles whatever uh which will have literally just pavement or gravel or whatever surface that's what we used before surface painter and you can use it to complement surface painter by covering the cracks basically in surface painter with that i'll link those in in the description the next question here is from rienk sjordsma which I totally mispronounced. What music do you like besides Pink Floyd? So, I mean, Pink Floyd's my favorite band, but I also like, I mean, The Beatles, Yellow. Uh, I like lots of hard rock and metal, like Rainbow. I enjoy, I mean, lots of experimental stuff like Zappa's work. Yeah, I mean, just lots of different rock and some pop and mostly just stuff from the 70s and 60s, but also 90s and more recent. Next question, also related to music. What classical composer do you like the most? Do you listen to classical music while building in City Skylines? Uh, that's from Alvaro MF. Uh, I don't listen to much classical music, but I have listened to a ton in the past. I mean, this might be a normie answer, but Chopin is probably my favorite classical composer. Um, I mean, he's obviously like romantic era, but you get what I mean. Uh, the, but I don't, I'm not like a classical music buff or anything like that, but I, I do enjoy it. Final question here from Breaded Cat. What is your opinion on monorails, like the one in Seattle and Vancouver in Expo 86? I wasn't actually aware that there's a monorail in Vancouver, but I'll look into that. They're mostly usually gimmicky and probably not a good solution for most mass transit and because they're just too expensive in a lot of circumstances, but they can work maybe in specific circumstances, just not a major solution like light rails are. Anyway, yeah, that's basically it for the Q&A. Hopefully you learned something from that. I think half of it was me talking about music, which will probably happen more in the future. Uh, feel free to ask whatever questions you'd like in the comments, except questions about be building the Midwest with a military base or something like that. And uh, I'm going to get comments about that for sure. But yeah, the Q&A, hashtag Q&A in the comments, and you'll be able to uh, maybe get featured in the video. And let me know if you want to be anonymous or not, because I know some people might want that. Moving forward, we are working on this rail intersection here. I'm just placing some trees in the middle of it. And, oh, okay, we moved over to, this is just basically a gap in between downtown and old town that we needed to fill in, which I filled in before, sort of, but then never detailed. And I'm just filling it back in again with buildings that I like better. It was a weird assortment of buildings before. Now I'm sticking to mostly some older stuff here. Although I am adding a couple newer apartment buildings. Once again, though, mostly older, older stuff like this block and most of Old Town are definitely you know, areas that were built a long time ago. I wasn't really sure what to do here, because on one hand it seems like, well, 
Old Town was built around that grid and nothing around it's gonna be that old. Maybe this was definitely, like all of this was industrial in the past. Well, I think it would make sense that maybe this main avenue that connects the Old Town and the Downtown was already there to some degree and buildings were built around it and the grid was maybe broken even a long time ago. It's not perfectly realistic. There are other factors that I could make more realistic, but I was spending way too much time on it and I was waiting, like I, I waited to build this area for like a month, even though it was a 15 minute build. It, it was just waiting for so long because I thought I would get the realism wrong, but uh, I had to just do it. You'll see this area, which is in Old Town, but starting to transition out of it, I start to add a couple of maybe slightly newer buildings, but uh, mostly still just older stuff. And I think I pulled off the transition really well. I think you'll see in the, the cinematics a little bit later, or at least the flyover, this, the transition works very well. And especially because the newer stuff that we place that seems really abrupt because like right across that highway from old town there is completely new development like no old development on that block but that block was definitely most definitely industrial in the past and repurposed recently um land that was changed from industrial to other zoning there so that that part's realistic i'll talk a little bit more about in the that in the overview because that makes sense for uh, a city like this that's newly developing some newer residential blocks and commercial blocks throughout the city which in, in areas which were either not developed before or were much lower density so right here i'm placing a like construction site i've clipped this shorter construction building and the taller one together you should be able to find these by con using Control f and looking for construction in my uh collections in the description like all my assets are in my collections so you just gotta find them but uh but yeah the construction site i'm just placing some fences around it very basic detailing but i wanted to make one big building here i didn't want to leave this area open i want the hint that new development is coming to areas that are even like areas like chinatown are going to get developed or at least around chinatown is, go is going to get developed soon maybe the city will preserve the historical corridor right uh, on Wing Luke Avenue, but Chinatown, the Chinatown surroundings are definitely vulnerable to new development, which might gentrify the area. And this is a perfect example of that. There's industrial right next to it, but developers are definitely making their way into even the more historical areas of the city. Quick announcement here. This district here is going to be called Caton Square. That name was chosen by Kazuya. And that's after Horace Caton, who started the Seattle Republican, the largest black-owned newspaper um, in Seattle, the longest-running one as well. I was going to choose it anyway, but I feel like, considering recent events, it's uh, probably the perfect name for this part of town. And the next announcement here is that I replaced that old medieval-looking fort whatever it was it totally didn't work it was never going to stay forever there's no way that was going to stay so i re replaced it with this fort thing from battery park i think it looks a lot better let me know what you think anyway quick overview here we yeah we filled a lot of gaps today lots and lots of gaps um we needed to do that it was a really necessary episode i know it was a little bit of a you know a long one but not even in length, just in, in the fact that we didn't really have a core project. We worked on a bunch of smaller things throughout the episode, but it, it ended up closing this area out really well. This avenue is going to be called Columbia Avenue. It's a huge uh, artery for the city, getting you from downtown to Old Town and Chinatown very efficiently. And it has a light rail, light rail line, obviously, going through it. I made this uh, little highway interchange here just so people can... Uh, exit and enter the highway from either end and over here is the rail yard which i mostly detailed off camera it's not necessarily even a rail yard i mean i've got some trains parked there i don't even know what it is it's just the entrance to the train station but yeah i think it looks pretty cool i think it turned out great i like the construction site that we built there and yeah i placed some of jay's trains down here they look great the only thing is the windows were a little bit bright, but 
and, and also the colors are different from the actual trains I have in the city, but whatever, it's fine. Then this is the, the heart of the district and then the connector highway that sort of goes underground there. It might seem weird to see the new and the old next to each other with such a direct contrast, but the, the wherever there is new stuff, there was probably some sort of industry before or some sort of infrastructure that was not what it is now. Anyway, down here, not on ground level, we're on like the roof of a building or something. Looking over the front of the police headquarters, there's a bus stop out front and a light rail stop that probably makes for a good transfer. The buses sort of go alongside the light rail, but they end up in different places. And uh, I guess you could take the bus for more uh, frequent service and maybe the bus runs at uh, later hours. I know when I was in Berlin, they just stopped running light rails after a certain time, but then buses would ro like run on the same uh, ring road. And now we're on the walkway. I ended up just using the bad idea pathways for the walkway. It's totally non-functional. Nobody's walking on it for some reason, but that means that there aren't loads and loads of tourists walking on it like before, which was bad. So... Yeah, this is so satisfying. Look at this. R slash oddly satisfying material right here. Look at that. Yeah, I'm really happy with how this train yard ended up turning out. It might not be 100% realistic, but it's pretty unlikely I'll change it in the future. Here is an animated crane at this construction site. You gotta love it. Look at that. That asset is so cool. I've been using that a ton. And here are the police car props by, I mean, by Ninja Noob Slayer, retextured by Chisholm. And then I used some LAPD uh, props for the larger ones from Ninja Noob Slayer. And then, yeah, this is the core of Columbia Avenue here, or at least one part of it. It is what I'm calling this avenue that runs from downtown to the train station and ends sort of at the waterfront in Old Town. But yeah, that's basically it. I mean, hopefully you all enjoyed. If you did, definitely make sure to leave a like and subscribe. This video isn't monetized, but you can head over and support me on Patreon if you want. That's in the description. Save game access, early videos, stuff like that are over there. Uh, you could follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Those are in the description. But yeah, I mean, that's about it. Sorry for the tough discussion we had to have today, but it was necessary. See you next time.